welcome to the CRAB podcast. Here at Children Raised Around the Blind, we have two goals. Our first goal is to help those living with the blind to understand them better and to help children through the difficulties that come from living with a blind parent. Secondly, we want to spread awareness of the blind community. Here on the podcast, we will share the things that blind people can do and ways the sighted world can include them in everyday life. Join us to learn about the visually impaired community. So welcome to the podcast. This is Crab. I'm DJ and this is my um, baby, you could say. Um, Children Raised Around the Blind is something that I have um, wanted to do probably for many, many years and then finally decided I was going to start doing some videos on Facebook and um, really wanting to grow a community slowly but surely because I am a wife. Um, I just celebrated my 10 year anniversary with my husband in August and we have three children. My oldest is six and a half. My next child is three and a half. And then my youngest will be a year um, in October. And it's actually my youngest fault um, why I haven't been able to podcast as much. He um, was born with congenital heart defects, which we knew about before um, he was born and um, ended up not needing heart surgery right away. We went home for a little bit then went back. And then he had a really big struggle to just stay alive for um, another 10 weeks in the hospital we came home in the end of January of this year and then um, it's just kind of been a lot um, I was able to do um, another mini series back in um, April on I didn't think it looked like that um, you can check that podcast out that series um, I mean, it looks like what, like what it in the world, some of the things that we take for granted, those of us who can see fully, that somebody with visual impairment may not understand or may not have even thought about um, because it's more of a visual concept. So um, that was a fun mini series to do. We recorded all of that while I was in the hospital with him for two weeks while he had paraflu. And then we were able to stay out and um, was going to actually start back into podcasting in August. And we ended up back in the hospital due to HMPV, which is um, just a really bad cold. Um, but then with that, it also brought up that his um, VP shunt. So he has hydrocephalus, um, which is um, where your body can't get rid of the extra fluid in the brain. So it builds up and he has a special shunt in his head. Um, that helps with that well his wasn't working properly so there is starting to be more extra fluid in the brain again and so we ended up having a revision surgery at the end of our being sick and um, then coming back from that just kind of keeping a watch trying to continue to make sure he was healing and then last week he got a cold we avoided the hospital this time which is good um, but all of that with two other kids means that um, podcasting sits on the back burner. I don't make money yet from this. It's not an income stream. There's no revenue. So (laughs) it's just um, on the back burner. And I love doing this and I want to do more. I would like to get to the point of being able to have a bigger platform, Um, seeing our Instagram and Facebook grow to the thousands, being able to have speaking engagements, whether that's virtual on Zoom or Google Meets or in person, being able to speak about the experience of growing up with a blind parent, Um, different things that I've learned from the medical side of things, having a parent with a disability, and then now as I'm going through it with my own child, um, just a lot of the parallels that have come into play and that make things, um, I don't want to say easier, but more understanding for me because I've been there as the kid of somebody who's been um, unfairly treated because of her disability and then now I make sure as best I can that my son does not get um, treated wrongly and I look for things and ways to make the world around better and more accepting of people who are um, different. So that's kind of my life update. Um, (laughs) It's been crazy but we're doing it I'm going to, I've got a series um, laid out in my head and we're going to start working on that and it's going to be called What I Wish They Knew and we're going to talk about everything I can think of. So 
um, in no particular order, we're going to cover um, what it's like having a parent who has prosthetic eyes. I'm going to actually show you her eyes. Um, I did not get my phone out in a quick enough way recently, but her eye was put in the wrong way. I have a picture of that. And um, she went to change it, and it never had it happen before. And, of course, it happens in the middle of an event before it had hap the event was happening. But um, her eye went flying across the room. So here's this eyeball rolling around on the floor. Thankfully, there were not very many people there, so no one was freaking out. But, um, yeah, funny things like that. Like my mom's eyeball went rolling today. Um, or my mom's eyeball is in the wrong way to... How should you interact with them in public? You know, if you're a cashier, how do you how do you respond at doctor's offices and things like that? Um, we do still have the online courses going. Um, I have my new one that's uh, social media or presentation. I would love to have some more people who are interested in that. If you want a code, get with me and I can get a code for you. Um, but that one's only, I think, ten dollars on the website. The other two are free really, really want to help people better understand the blind world. There's a lot of things in the disability world, and there's a lot of different disabilities and different ways that we need to be inclusive. But um, blindness is still one of the hardest hit um, disabilities with being accepted and included. And I think a lot of it just has to do with the fact that those visual cues, the nonverbal cues are not there. And unlike autism, where, you know, you may not get them, at least they can look at you. Or at least they show body language. And a lot of people who've been born totally blind may not be able to respond in that way. So, um, for instance, many years ago, there was a study being done in Atlanta um, by some college kids. I don't remember which particular college. But my mom was made aware of it. And it was on gestures. How does a blind person gesture these things? As my mom told them, as somebody who's never seen ever in my life, I don't know what a gesture for high is. Or you're talking with my hands, which I do all the time. Um, she doesn't know. She's never seen. So, like, well, how would you, you know, demonstrate opening the door? Or how would you demonstrate um, pulling something off a shelf? And it looks very awkward because for them, and for her, it's not something that she does. She doesn't use gestures when you're talking to her. Her hands are usually going to sit still in her lap. Um, she's not going to make a lot of faces and extra facial expression other than knowing if she's happy or sad um, because that's not something she sees and picks up on. And so it's, it's not a cue. And I think that tends to still be why a lot of people are scared of blind people or they want to talk to the sighted person because it just feels kind of awkward, but it shouldn't, you know. And so that's what the series is going to be. It's going to be what I call a mini series. It's not necessarily going to mean it's only a few episodes as much as um, they're probably going to be shorter because my time clearly is um, a lot less. Um, I'm working also on writing two different books, so I'm busy. If you want to check out my first published book, you can check it out on Amazon. It's called God Minute for Good, and it's the story of um, caregiving for my mom, um, different illnesses she had outside of her blindness, and how that prepared me for my son, and it covers his first um, almost four months of life and everything we've gone through, um, the worst of things with him, and um, it was just something I wanted to write a book. It's not the first book I thought of writing, but I know a lot of people were following my son's story, and I wanted them to be able to understand a little bit of um, the ins and out, the emotional side of how I was dealing with what we were going through and how I was facing every day, and um, just a lot of emotions where um, we couldn't do anything. We, as the parents, could sit by his bedside, and we could touch him, and we could talk to him, but we had no idea what he could hear. Um, he couldn't move. He was um, on drugs that made it so he couldn't move. We couldn't hold him. And doctors who pretty much told us they had no idea what to tell us he would look like or act like because they didn't even know if his brain would survive. And um, it was a really rough time. 
And so all of that's in that book. I'm working on a second follow-up book, which I told people I'd write one after he turned one, um, what the first year actually entailed. So I'll go back and do a little bit of the backstory, but then, you know, how he's done, how things have improved, um, the ins and the outs, the ups, the downs, the days that I wanted to quit and just throw my hands in the air because it's too hard, um, which I think we all have that as humans. Um, there's been moments where it's just a lot. He has four different therapy sessions in a week, every week, every single week. Um, <laughs> and then my other, uh, my middle child also has a therapy session. So we have five therapy sessions a week plus the doctors and specialists that the baby needs to see, plus homeschooling, plus um, living life or trying to do a few activities, usually once a month trying to do something outside of the house so my kids don't go crazy. Um, and then wanting to do things like this, like blogging and you know trying to find time for me. So I'll, uh, just a lot of things um, will be covered in that book. And then the other one that I'm actually further along with, say further along, actually writing down. Um, it's going to be a book on uh, what it was like having a blind parent. So it'll be launched here on Crab. When I get that done, I think I'm on chapter three, the very first like rough draft. It's been in my head. Written it, started writing it a bunch of different times, but I finally got an outline put together. And um, now if I can set aside time and make time for me to sit and soak my feet once a week, that gives me a 30 minute writing session. So while I'm relaxing and soaking my feet in the tub, I can get my hands and I can jot down. I actually wrote a, a whole chapter the last time and was shocked. And like, and my look at the clock was only 20 minutes <laughs> that I had written so much down. I'm a paper and pen person. So write it out that way. Um, then I'll type it up. And of course, as I type it, there'll be more that'll come in and then I'll print that out and start doing some editing and it's probably still going to be another year. I would love for it to be done sooner than that, but I'm not going to put a time frame right now on that book, but that'll be a fun book for you guys to read and to just stay you know, attuned to that is going to be coming. Um, I also have a speech that I'll put in there that I wrote when I was 14 on what it was like to have a blind parent at that point in that stage of the day. And then um, I'm also going to have some resources, some tips, um, just some life hacks, I guess you could call them, for getting through some of those tough times and different stages of vision loss. So that is all ahead in my personal life I'm here on Crab. I'm hopefully going to get back to doing the podcast and then whatever podcast um, I'm launching I don't know if it'll be every month or every other week, but I'll also be posting some other information in regards to that. So if it's like a cashier, we'll talk about how a blind person does their money or we'll talk about different um, ways to make your credit card so you can you know, know which card is which. Um, some things like that that are just everyday things that will be going up on our social media pages. So stay tuned. We'll get some more stuff on the blog. Um, it's almost Christmas time, so I think this year I'll be able to get a gift guide together, and we'll be working on that. Also, um, some lists to the streaming services that have um, audio description. I actually turned it on on our Roku and forgot that because I turned it on on Roku, it went on everything that if anything had audio description. So I actually had to turn it off because when you're watching Jeopardy, it um, gives the answer before the answer is actually given and then um same thing with american ninja warrior it tells you what's going to happen before the person falls so <laughs> we turned it off for a little bit but it was a lot of fun so like a lot of the kids shows my kids watch paw patrol um clifford i think daniel tiger a lot of the pbs um, public broadcasting station um there have audio description already on there and so as my kids are listening to their kid shows and i'm off pumping and taking care of the baby. Um, I could know what was going on without looking at the TV, so that was kind of fun. So that's usually a big thing um, in audio descriptions, definitely something we're going to discuss again. Um, it's something I wish I could get more organizations and companies to get behind um, because you could, we would promote it. I'm not going to lie, like if there's something that's audio described, 
and we let the blind community know a lot of them are ready to go for it. So just be aware of that, you know, take into account those types of things. And I will see you guys for our new mini series on what I wish they knew. Y'all have a good day.